Hello folks, Tom here. Just thought I'd do a quick video whilst this is still fresh in my memory. So the other day I realised that Soldier Fortune 2 still exists and that it had really been too long since I last played it. However, getting it to look right took a little bit of doing. Nothing too arduous, but I thought I'd share what I had to do. So if you're watching this video, you've probably got Soldier Fortune 2 already installed. Keep in mind that I have the Gold Edition. I'm not sure whether one of the fixes will work with the Standard Edition, but I'll get onto that a little bit later. So the first thing I'd suggest is making an image of disc 1 and having it mounted. Because as with games at the time, Soldier Fortune 2 requires the disc in order to run. And I couldn't find a no CD crack that worked properly. And I've never really been a fan of them in general. As they can interfere with updates and you know, I just don't really like them. So having a mounted image will save you the effort of having to put the disc in every single time. And that whirly spinning noise which we don't hear very often anymore. So the first thing I had to do was find the install directory and find the sof2.exe file. Right click and go to the compatibility tab and find the override high DPI scaling behaviour box. If you have ever played an old game that when it is full screen is too zoomed in and showing about the top left fourth of the whole screen, this usually fixes it. I don't know if it will be a problem for everyone but at 1440p I needed to turn it on. Next load the game and turn on all the settings up to max. You won't have the resolution you want just yet, but change these for now. So when we do do our custom resolution, we don't have to go back in and change any of the settings because it will make it revert to a lower resolution, which is really, really annoying. Now we'll go into the base folder and find the sof2sp config file and open that in WordPad or something similar. Try to avoid Notepad though, as this will just display everything in one big paragraph and it's quite hard to find what you're looking for. Do a find for the following lines. Set it R underscore custom width. For me, I set this to 2560. Set to R custom height, again for me 1440. And set to R underscore mode and set this to minus one. I think that's what enables us to have the custom resolution. Obviously change your custom height and width to whatever your resolution is. I haven't tried it with 4K, but from what I've read, it seems like it will work. So now head over to the widescreen gaming forum website and download one of the free files depending on your aspect ratio. For most people, just the widescreen file will do. Inside this, you'll find an update file and just drop this into the base folder where the config file sits. This is the part that I was referring to earlier as not being sure whether it would work with the vanilla version as it does with the gold because I noticed that there were three more update files in the base directory and this is update 4 so presumably it needs 1 through 3 in order to work but I'm sure you could just find them online somewhere and install them on the vanilla version and it will work just fine. Next up is a more complicated bit. We need to edit a DLL file to change the field of view. I tried doing it without this and the aiming seemed a little off so it's best to get it done. So we are going to need a hex editor. You can download the free one called HXD which is tried and true. Download that and open it up and find the cgamex86.dll file located in the root directory of your install. Make a backup of this first if you're a bit worried about messing it up. Do a control F find for cg underscore fov. Ignore everything in the center to the left and just look for the number 80 on the right next to where it's found the text. You can edit this just like any other text editor and we need to change that number 80 to 97 for an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 or 91 for an aspect ratio of 16 by 10. Save that and you are ready to blow faces apart. There is one final thing for me that I didn't notice until the jungle level and that is that the game was really really dark. If this does happen then you need to go back into the config file where we set our custom resolution and find the line setter r underscore overbright bits. Just change this from a 1 to a 0 and you'll find that this fixes it. It also makes the slider in the options menu actually do something, where pretty much before it was just there for show. And there you have it, a little bit of faffing around but worth it in the end, and I hope to get a review of Soldier of Fortune 2 once I've played through it, which is proving a lot harder than I remember, even on normal difficulty. 